Hello everyone and welcome to the week 4 edition of Instant Replay where I give you my take on the most controversial plays of the weekend. I'm Simon Borg. We start in Columbus and the entertaining match between Crew SC and Portland. And the visiting Timbers were on the board in the 4th minute. But was Dairon Aspria offside on the pass that led to his goal? Assistant referee Jason White keeps his flag down and the freeze frame looks even to me. Although soccer photogrammetry on Twitter uses graphical analysis to call Aspria offside by about a foot and a half. I thought referee Silvio Petrescu had a big decision to make in the 33rd minute on this suspicious tackle by Croatia's Artur, who took a bad touch and then looks like he lunges for the ball to make sure he doesn't lose it. But was that a challenge that endangered the safety of Portland Sebastian Blanco, who hits the turf? We can't say for sure from this angle, but referee Silvio Petrescu was right there and eventually tells Blanco to get up after the Timbers put the ball out of play. Ten minutes later, we also don't get a good replay on the clash in the box between Portland forward Fernando Adi and Croatia defender Jonathan Mensa, who seems to have both arms on Adi. But here too, Petrescu motions for Adi to get up. It feels like we have one of those every week involving Adi. But just before the half, I thought Petrescu graced the Timbers, because I'd argue this foul by Diego Chara, who was already on a yellow, should have been punished with a second caution. It's a late foul on Cruasi's will trap, and it also stopped a promising attack. But Petrescu opts to give Chara a talking to, to the dismay of Cruasi head coach Greg Berhalter. And I felt there were also grounds to send off Timbers winger Sebastian Blanco for a second yellow after he chops down Cruasi's Ethan Finley from behind with 12 minutes left. But there too, it looks like Petrescu uses the occasion to give Blanco a final verbal warning. Crew SC would win the match on this late goal by rookie Nico Hansen. And by the way, great eye by the ref to see that the ball came off Ola Kamara's chest and not his arm on the initial shot. But the home side also had what I thought was a decent penalty shot in the 77th minute. That looked to me like a push by Timbers right back Alvis Powell on the aforementioned Kamara in the box. The referee Petrescu says, play on. Next up, Gillette Stadium, where the New England Revolution made easy work of Minnesota United with a 5-2 win, and two of the Revs' goals came on penalty kicks, one in each half. No issues on the first one. Minnesota defender Vadim Demidov is late sticking his leg out on Juan Agudelo in the box, and Lee Wynn says thank you very much. But there was a question on the second penalty, and specifically regarding the spot of the foul by Colin Warner on Diego Fagundes. On the replay, it looks like Warner clips Fagundes just outside the box here, and that's what Warner is arguing. But referee Ricardo Salazar points to the spot, and this time it's New England's Chris Tierney who obliges. The score was already 5-2 revs when Minnesota United had a penalty appeal of their own, and forward Cristian Ramirez feels pretty strongly about this one. Now the replay, although not the best angle, does seem to show defender Benjamin Angua hugging down on Ramirez's right arm. Here's the instance on this freeze frame right here. And I think it was enough to prevent Ramirez from making a play on the ball. But no whistle from the referee. This match could have gotten even more out of hand than it did for Minnesota. In the 17th minute, there's this wild follow through by Loon's midfielder Ipson, who raises his leg high enough to get the Revolution's Andrew Farrell in the face. I didn't like that one bit, and I thought Ipson actually went out of his way to make contact with Farrell. For that reason, I would have gone straight red there for serious foul play, but Salazar doesn't whistle for the foul and eventually stops play because of a potential head injury to Farrell. And we end at Red Bull Arena where I thought there could have been a red card after just three minutes when New York's Felipe sends his studs into the leg of Real Salt Lake's Luis Silva. Referee Chris Penzo called the foul, but no cards were forthcoming. Another player I thought was lucky not to be punished by a red card was Real Salt Lake's Damar Phillips, who I thought raised his left elbow and pointed it backward in the direction of Connor Late's head in the 26th minute. Now I'm sure Phillips would argue he was just shielding the ball there, but I felt he sought out the contact and even leaned into Laid with some force when the ball was for all intents and purposes out of play and unplayable. But assistant referee Nick Uranga, who's right there, doesn't signal any irregularities despite Laid's protests. Another rough challenge just a few minutes later. This time it's New York's Kamar Lawrence and RSL's Brooks Lennon coming together on this 50-50 ball, both with their legs raised. This is a tough one to call, and the replays don't help much, but referee Chris Penso shows the yellow to Lawrence there. This turned out to be a heated affair, and in the second half, there were some extracurriculars on this foul by Luke Mulholland on New York's Daniel Royer. The referee shows Mulholland the yellow, which I think is the right call, but although Royer has beef with Mulholland, it's the ball kicked by Sunday Steven into Royer that I find most egregious. What do you think? Let us know in the comments, and thanks again for all those tips using hashtag instant replay on Twitter. Until next week, for our editor Rich Hernandez, I'm Simon. Borg. See you next time!